हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू अवर लेक्चर दैट इज बेसिकली ऑन द इलेक्ट्रिक प्रपल्शन राइट अंटिल नाउ वी हैव सीन अबाउट द डिफरेंट मोटर्स डिफरेंट अरेंजमेंट्स ऑफ द इलेक्ट्रिक प्रपल्शन सिस्टम नाउ वी नीड टू सी अबाउट द टू अदर मोटर्स दैट वी आर एक्चुअली यूजिंग इन द व्हीकल एज वेल The first one is the PM brushless DC motor. Now it is a one of the type of the DC motor in which we are using the permanent magnets in place of the field winding. Right. The principal video that we saw in that DC motor principle, in that we saw that permanent motors was used around the armature. so this was the type of the permanent motor dc motor in this we are not using the brushes right so brush are not there so friction will not be present inside the dc motor so this is a better option compared to our normal dc motor right it has some advantages which is that the pm dc motor is has the high efficiency it is compact compared to the uh, normal dc motor it has the control which is bit very much easier the cooling is easier for this motor it has low maintenance great longevity which means the life of this motor is higher and it has higher reliability and at the last it has the low noise emissions the noise inside this motor is lower compared to the normal dc motor but there are some other disadvantages of the pm brushless dc motor in which the permanent magnets are used is first thing is the main one that is the cost of this dc motor is higher cost of the permanent magnets is higher and we are using the brushless arrangement so cost of that complication will also increase also the limited constant power range in that we will see that the power range of this motor is up to a certain limit after that limit the power cannot be increased the safety is also big concern for the pm dc motor because of the usage of the permanent magnets the magnet can demagnetize itself with the time it can demagnetize so that has been proved that is a big disadvantage with this motor the high speed capability of this motor is very less which means the speed of the vehicle will not be higher which is required for our electric vehicle and the inverter failures in the bldc motor is higher right which is brushless dc motor is higher chances of failing the inverter in case of the dc motor because during the inverter process we want to get the power in the backward direction for the charging at that time the failure chances is higher in the pm brushless motor this is a basic circuit for the pl dc motor that is a brushless dc motor in that case you can see here a proper rotor is given inside which is n and s as in it around that a permanent magnet is attached for the brushless dc motor this three are connected with three different coils with 1 2 and 3 a dsp controller is attached with bldc motor which gives us the proper value this are the basic two types of the bldc motor in which the first one is the surface mounted pm motor and the second one is the interior mounted pm motor right you can uh, classify by the names as well that in the case of the surface mounted the permanent magnets are mounted on the outer surface of the rotor and in case of the interior mounted the magnets are mounted inside the rotor as you can clearly see from this figure now in the case of the control of the bldc motor drives this diagram is for the torque controlling of the bldc motor so when the command of the torque is provided the current controller and commutation sequencer is attached with that which is connected further with the three phase inverter that is connected with our bldc motor so by the help of the current controller and communication sequencer the gating signal is provided to the three phase inverter and the torque is further controlled this is a second speed control of the bldc motor in which you can see that speed control is inserted before the uh, input has been supplied to our controller the controller will be same that is current controller and communication sequencer which will provide the idea about the speed that will be controlled by the help of the simple speed controller which is attached before our sequencer 
that further will be given to our three phase inverter which is further connected with our BLDC motor. Next is the switched reluctance motor that is also known as the SR motor. Now in the case of the SR motor you can see a proper uh, diagram or the proper arrangement of the SR motor whenever we are using. So in that the first electric energy input is supplied to a non power converter which is further connected with our SRM then SRM is connected with our load. Now what are the requirements that needs to be connected with SRM is the sensor that is current and the position sensor which is connected with our control and the controller is connected with further our controller commands which will be given by our controlling system or the management system which is connected with our SR motor. This is a basic diagram of the SR motor. The SR motor is a simple uh, classification based on the number of windings that we are using. You can see that rotor and the stator pole is provided. On the rotor and stator pole, the stator windings are provided. So based on the number of windings, as you can see 6 by 4 SRM and 8 by 6 SRM. The slots are provided in which the stator windings are provided and that windings works as the normal motor. All these motors that we are seeing needs to be operated as a generator whenever we want to charge our battery or when the power is in excess amount. So that excess amount of power is not wasted and used as the charging. Now next is the voltage controlled SR drive in which the controlling will be done by the voltage controlling. There are the number of controllers is attached to the open loop controller is connected with our PWM controller which is the module controller. Then the angle calculator is connected which will calculate the angles of our stator blades which we saw in the previous diagram. Then the electric commutator will connect it to our converter and the signal will be given to our electric commutator which will further give the indication to the SRM according to a controlling requirement. Next is the current controlled SR drive in which the current will be controlled. So for that we have kept the open loop controller. Also the torque controller is placed in between the open loop and current controller. The angle calculate calculator is still there which will cal calculate the angle of the stator blades and the electric commutator is further connected with the current controller and that further will give us the value of the converter and SRM and depending on that the speed and the torque of the SRM will be controlled. Now next thing that should be seen is the how to match the electric machine and the IC. If we are using the hybrid vehicles in that hybrid vehicle how we will match the power of electric machine and IC. So for that the factors that needs to be considered are first the initial acceleration time should be kept. At that time both the machines will be used. The value of the cruising speed at the rated vehicle speed will be reached. The value of the cruising at maximum vehicle speed will affect the specification of the induction motor right which means that when the vehicle is cruising at the maximum vehicle rated speed at that time the power requirement from the induction motor should be defined and from that requirement we will get the matching of the IC engine and electric motor. The tractive force that is required to propel the vehicle to drive the cycle chosen gives the necessary motor specification used in the drivetrain. So we will select the drive cycle depending on the requirement of our hydric vehicle and from that selection we will require we will see which motor specification is required for the given vehicle. This is basically how the uh, different conditions of the matching IC engine and electric machine works. So for the initial acceleration the speed will increase at the cruising speed the vehicle will stay at the constant speed then we will reach to a maximum speed and after that the deceleration or we can say the retardation will happen. So according to this diagram the proper matching of our electric motor and the IC engine will be 
done so that the power that is been coming from the electric motor can be matched or can be used in combination with the IC engine power in the hybrid electric vehicle. Next is the basic thing that is sizing of the electric machine. Now in the case of the sizing of the electric machine, the sizing of the three components that needs to be done first is the uh, electric storage sizing, the sizing of the power converter and the sizing of the electric motor. Right. So for that you can see this is a basic arrangement of our hybrid vehicle in which you can see that engine and electric uh, supply is connected in combination. Normally for the sizing these four criteria are kept in the mind whenever we are sizing the electric machine for that the peak torque and peak power will be kept what is the torque that can be used as the peak and what is the peak power that vehicle can achieve. So based on that the sizing of the vehicle electric machine will be done. The constant power speed ratio will be kept that means the power and speed ratio should be constant so that the torque can be obtained from the vehicle and at the last EM sizing that is the electric motor sizing will be seen in which the motor will be properly sized based on the power required from that motor and at last we will size the power electronics or we can say the power converters that we are using our, in our electric vehicle. So this was a basic thing about the motors that we are using in the electric propulsion system and also we saw in brief how the speed or the power can be matched with engine and electric motor when we are using hybrid vehicle right so this was it for the syllabus of our subject that is electric hybrid and fuel cell vehicle we will further meet for a new syllabus until then thank you so much